Good morning, everyone. Uh, we want to welcome all of you here, and we want to welcome the A&M College Station Group to the Alamo Colleges. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you visit the Alamo Colleges. You know we're five individually accredited institution with uh, more than 60,000 students. So on behalf of Chancellor Bruce Leslie and our college presidents, we're pleased to have A&M and Chevron uh, to have invited us, the Alamo Colleges, to collaborate on this engineering academy which will benefit students and the business community. I want to start by recognizing some of our uh, guests that are here. We have Jason Hase from uh, Senator Carlos Uresti's office. We have a representative from Trey Martinez Fisher's office. I can't see around here, so I'm assuming they're standing up. A representative from Lloyd Doggett's office. Ina Minharis, our state representative. Uh, Mike with Lamar Smith, U.S. Representative's Office. Good Need to mention Elaine Mendoza, who's on the Board of Regents for Texas A&M. And a, a, a good friend of ours in the Alamo Colleges. And Dr. Matson, uh, President of A&M. You know, we serve a lot of students who are first generation who may not realize that they can be successful in college. And the faculty at the Alamo Colleges prepare our students for success at transfer and for high demand jobs. We've been in dialogue across our colleges with business leaders and with the university leaders using research from best practices about how to increase completions for the students that come to us and ensure that when they transfer, all of their courses are going to count toward their degree. Community colleges are growing, and we enroll more students than the four-year institutions. That's because we prepare them and send them to you. We have small classes. We have superior faculty who really engage students in their learning and show them that they can be successful. So universities like A&M College Station are recognizing that students that transfer from the Alamo Colleges are as successful as your native students. We have experience with partnering with A&M. Uh, Dr. Leslie and the college's leadership have worked with uh, A&M San Antonio since they started their campus at Palo Alto College. Dr. Ferrier was a great uh, supporter for us and we've been in many dialogues already with Dr. Matson. So we're glad, we're always glad to send our students to A&M. We realize there's a need for students who have STEM training and degrees, both transfer and workforce. Many middle skill jobs here in San Antonio and elsewhere uh, are, are jobs that our students can take as soon as they leave here. And we know that there's a high demand for engineering students. So we currently have a large number of students that are planning to transfer for an engineering degree. The Alamo Colleges are looking forward to collaborating with Texas A&M College Station to provide opportunities for additional students to earn a two-year degree here and then go on to become an Aggie and be able to support A&M for the rest of their lives. The students who complete their degrees at one of the Alamo Colleges will be well prepared to be successful when they get to uh, College Station. So thank you again for allowing us to partner with you, and it's my pleasure to be able to introduce Chancellor Sharp. Uh, as Chancellor of the Texas A&M System, John Sharp leads the 19-member system, which includes 11 universities and seven state agencies, two service units, and a health uh, science center. Sharp brings with him more than three decades of public service and a passion to make the A&M system the best system of higher education in the country. He earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in polit political science from Texas A&M University in 1972, where he was student body president and a member of the Corps staff of the Corps of Cadets. Upon graduation, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Army Reserves. In 1976, Sharp received a master's degree in public administration from Southwest Texas State University while working full-time 
with the Legislative Budget Board in Austin. I imagine that was more than full time. Mm -hmm. In 1978, he was elected to the House, Texas House of Representatives and was named Outstanding Freshman by Texas Monthly. He won a seat in the Texas Senate in 1982, where he served on the powerful Senate Finance Committee and was elected to the Texas Railroad Commission in 1986. Sharp was elected State Controller in 1990 and re-elected in 1994. Sharp has been married to Charlotte Hahn of Austin since 1978. They have a son, Spencer, and a daughter, Victoria. And so I hope that you'll join me in welcoming Chancellor Sharp. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here, all of you, and for, for hosting us. Uh, we're especially thankful to be here with, uh, with Chevron, and we'll get into that in just a minute. They made this uh, moment possible. Uh, very happy to be here with the Vice Chairman of our Board of Regents, Elaine Mendoza of San Antonio, who is not only the Vice Chairman of our Board, she makes this kind of stuff possible because she's the Chairman of the Committee uh, that deals with all academics for all 11 institutions throughout the system. So welcome to you and to Cindy Matson, our brand new President of Texas A&M San Antonio, wonderful to have you here as well. Texas A&M system is all about solving problems. That's what land grant universities do. Uh, the two problems we focus on here is between now and the next 10 years, 2025, we will have to have, according to every council, every president of this country has had, uh, a million new STEM graduates in colleges and universities. Uh, science, technology, engineering, and math graduates. The second problem is that we, we're going to have to do everything we can, and we do do everything we can, uh, to make college more affordable for young men and women uh, to attend. And there are lots of kids uh, that can't afford, perhaps, to go to College Station or to another city and maybe could afford to go to college if it were here. Uh, and uh, for whatever reason, um, not convenient or not, not, not able to, to leave home. We solved that problem as well because what we do here uh, with the help of uh, Chevron and the Texas A&M Engineering and Texas A&M University in collaboration here is we uh, accept these young men and women into Texas A&M University Engineering. Uh, they are going to be taught here by instructors from Texas A&M University. Uh, and in two years, they're simply going to move to College Station. Uh, and we, every study that's ever been has shown uh, that when you, when you get started in a community college and transfer, your chances of finishing that degree are much higher than if you started as a, as a freshman at, at virtually any college or university in the country. And so with the great work and collaboration of of Alamo uh, and Chevron, we're able to, with Dr. Banks, put together what I think and predict will be something that will be the precursor of a national model uh, of how to educate young men and women, particularly in, in, in fields that are critical to this country, like engineering. There's never, I've never seen a president of the United States in my lifetime not say that oh my, not lament the fact that we're not graduating enough engineers in this country. Every one of them has said, oh my gosh, the Chinese are beating us, Singapore's beating us, everyone's beating us. Uh, they're not going to beat Texas A&M because we're going to do what this country needs. We're going to produce engineers. And with the help of, uh, of Alamo College, uh, Dr. Banks is going to produce uh, the best engineers. And when they grow to Texas A&M, they will find uh, depending on the rank and the category, third, fifth, or ninth best engineering school that exists on the planet. And so uh, we look, really look forward to this. The person responsible for putting this together, for, for being the genesis of it, uh, is the best engineering dean that exists in the United States, and that's Kathy Banks of Texas A&M. May I present the dean of engineering of Texas A&M, Kathy Banks. So this is a great day. It's so exciting to be here, and uh, particularly when we know that Texas faces so many technological challenges in the future, in the near future. Um, we have issues with water. We have issues with transportation. We have issues with um, our IT, cybersecurity. These are all problems that engineers 
this, that engineers should solve. We need all of the talented engineers at the table. We need all of the students who have the ability and the drive to become engineers to focus on these types of problems. Some of the brightest students in Texas, though, for reasons they can't control, may not be able to leave home uh, for the first two years. And those are the students that we are targeting. And they should have the same opportunity as first-year students to participate in a world-class university with a top-ranked engineering program that is highly regarded by industry around the world. The academies, we believe, will address some of those challenges for, for a wide range of students. This isn't a transfer program, a traditional transfer program. It's, it's not a distance education program where we're streaming all the courses and not showing up. The academy students are accepted into and enrolled in the College of Engineering at Texas A&M College Station from day one. They're one of us. They have a seat. Then they also simultaneously enroll in the classes at the two-year institution. So they're enrolled in both, a dual enrollment program, co-enrollment program. Um, Texas A&M University faculty will not stay in College Station. They'll be here. They'll be on this campus, one of the campuses, teaching the courses, advising the students, leading success programs, supporting the students as they develop, I believe, into a cohort that will come to College Station their junior year. The students can live at home the first two years so they can save money. They pay a lower tuition with them, the tuition associated with a, a two-year institution. And we know the model work. The Chancellor just mentioned data from the College of Engineering at College Station have shown that the students who have come from a two-year university have a higher graduation rate than the students that started in College Station in engineering. So they're more likely to be successful. So if we're looking for student success, then this is the type of program that's necessary. This wouldn't have happened without Chevron. Um, it is not uh, just for us to come up with the ideas. We also have to have funding to move forward. So uh, thanks to Chevron, these academies are now a reality. Shark Yusufai is Chevron's Vice President for University Relations and is with us today to make comments about Chevron's uh, perspective on the program. Thank you, Kathy. Howdy. Howdy. All right. <laughs> you know, when I do that in California, I don't get a response back, so I have to do that two or three times. So let me say that this is kind of a, um, a maroon letter day for both Chevron and our 100-year relationship with Texas A&M. And we're so proud to bring Alamo College into this relationship together with other institutions around the state. Uh, you know, I was talking to my colleague Glenn Weckerlin, who uh, will actually manage this relationship going forward. And, you know, one of the things that we're always asked is, why do we do this? And it, we do this because of business needs. Uh, we do this because it's the right thing to do. But our global business needs constant innovation in engineering and technology to thrive. And it's not just our business, it's the business of all, any company that uses technology. And as we look at the landscape, we find that uh, there is a huge gap in technology and innovation that John referred to. In fact, the President's Council on Jobs and Competitiveness said that the stark reality is that we're not making progress. So the, the country, the state, the world needs more engineers. And they need engineers of the highest quality, as you find at Texas A&M. The other thing that we have found as an employer of 10,000 employees in the state of Texas is our performance improves when our innovation and creativity improve. You cannot cost cut your way to prosperity and you cannot spend your way to prosperity. You must out innovate. And in order to out innovate, you must have ingenuity and ingenuity comes from diversity. Uh, diverse populations that are traditionally underrepresented in the STEM field, but particularly in engineering, but are so richly represented in colleges like the Alamo College uh, of San Antonio. So this is the, the intersection of those, those two things, the great need for technology and innovation and the great need for the engineering profession to look like Texas and to look like America. So as, as a 40-year veteran of Chevron and as a proud member of the class of 74, I couldn't tell you how delighted I am to have now Alamo Colleges as a partner. Uh, Chevron is very pleased to support this wonderful, remarkable endeavor. 
It is quite unique. I was just telling John and Kathy that I also sit on the board of uh, the University of California, the advisory board, and this initiative was suggested by people in Silicon Valley as a landmark initiative. So what you're doing here is amazing. The results it will produce, because it has some wonderful partners, are going to be amazing. And we look forward to welcoming some amazing graduates from this program into our company. So thank you for being here. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Executive Vice President and Provost, Karen Watson. Thank you very much. Um, now you all just have to hang out. I have a 50-minute lecture that I... <laughs> So I want you to know I've been working with Alamo Colleges since the early 90s. Um, we have always found you know, to be great partners, and I really do appreciate that uh, from the university perspective. At Texas A&M, over a quarter of our students who graduate every year have spent uh, at least a year and a half to two years at a community college, and over 70% have taken courses from community colleges. So it's a very important part of higher education. And you give us this opportunity to make sure that we have a seamless operation. And we're very proud to do it with our leading college, the College of Engineering. It's one of the more difficult places for students to make that jump from community colleges into the bachelor's level degree. And so making this as seamless as possible is very, very important to what we're doing. And we could not do it if Chevron hadn't stepped forward and to help us with this. Because it's fine for us to have these great ideas, but it takes a spark. It takes a shark. In this no, it <laughs> takes a spark for somebody to be able to help us to launch this. We know it will work. We know it will take work. And we really appreciate Chevron backing us as we start this. Thank you very much. So I don't know if you have uh, any other comments, or do you want to take any questions? Or um, sure, anybody got a, a question you'd like to ask? If you're not particular about the answer, we're not. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Chancellor Sharp will answer on it. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you all for being here, and thank you for this opportunity. I think it's going to be very exciting, and you know, it's a, a prime example of bringing the community college, university, and the business world together mm -hmm. to meet the needs for the future. So thank you for being here. Ha, ha, ha. 